Hello there, Salim Omar here from the Straight Talk About Small Business Success podcast, bringing you another episode of an amazing uh, interview. Uh, the, my guest, her, her name is Fabi Paolini. Fabi, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me here, Salim. I'm really excited to talk to you and your audience today. Same here. Fabi is a brand sp- strategist. She works with business owners to position themselves as premium brands that attract high-end clients, customers, patients, whatever it is that you're serving, by upgrading their marketing with magnetic messaging. She's a, you know, she's a leading authority on messaging, brand positioning, and premium-based design. She's helped hundreds of entrepreneurs build authority businesses while impacting their audience with her techniques. So let's just dive right in, Fabi, if we can. Um, Mark, so we're talking about marketing, and it's such a big, it's such an important aspect of any business because we're looking to always grow and bring in the right clients. And your specialty is like premium brands, you know, bringing in high value clients. So, what makes someone a premium buyer? Yes, I love this question because oftentimes people think that what makes somebody a premium buyer is their capacity to pay, right? Like, oh, if I'm a millionaire, well, then that must make me a premium buyer. That's not how I view premium buyers. I view premium buyers as people who um, are going to value time more than money, meaning somebody who's going to say, you know what, I would rather pay to get the solution than spend the next 10 years of my life trying to figure this out on my own. And these are people who I see as action takers, people who are resourceful, people who are very much vision driven. So it's not all about the problem and the situation that they're in. Yes, obviously they have problems and their situations that they're going through, but their, their life doesn't revolve around the problem. Their life revolves around, I want to get there and what do I need to do to get there faster? So they're much, very much driven by that desire, if that makes sense. Hmm. So yeah, I can, I can imagine a practice or a business being much more enjoyable to work with when we've got those types of clients, those mm-hmm. that are action takers, because then they're looking for good advice. They're looking for good products, good services, and they're willing to take action. Absolutely. Yes. Cool. Awesome. So, you know, something you you write and you, you talk about is the Ursula effect. What is that? Yes. So, The Ursula effect is something that I discovered a few years ago, and it's something that the majority of business owners are doing without realizing. So I use the Ursula as an analogy from Ursula from the Little Mermaid, which means that you're speaking to the poor, unfortunate souls. So a lot of marketers or maybe not say marketers, business owners in their marketing, they're speaking a lot to the problem. A lot of people are telling people, you know what, you need to speak to the problem. People are going to pay money to get away from a problem, not to go towards something that they desire. So you need to agitate the pain. You need to make them feel how bad the situation is. Otherwise, their life is going to fall apart or their business or their health or their relationship or their whatever it is, it's going to fall apart. So a lot of people or a lot of business owners are really there agitating the pain. And in that process, they're becoming that Ursula speaking to the poor and fortunate soul, which to me means that they're speaking to the victims, the people that are not responsible for themselves or their own success. And again, what I like to focus on is speaking to that premium buyer, to that person who is ready to go, ready to solve the problem. And the type of language that only focuses on agitating the pain and going deep into like, like almost like putting a dagger in their heart and be like, ah, if you don't fix this problem right now, you're like, your whole life is going to fall apart. That ends up attracting the wrong people. We want to speak to the elevated version of our audience instead. So no (laughs) or so language, if that makes sense. Wow. So, so what are some, like, what are the top messaging elements that we need to do to talk to the the visionaries to talk to that that upper echelon you know of folks that is more vision vision driven which is Mm -hmm. more desire driven which is more goal driven 
Yes. So there's really three things that are the most important things within messaging that you need to take into account. The first one is really understanding what makes you different as a brand. And we hear this, we know this, we understand it, like conceptually, we get it. But oftentimes I see people making the mistake of sounding like everybody else because they believe that that type of communication is what's necessary to build success when obviously it's not. So what you want to do instead is really understand, well, what are my differentiating factors and how can I really leverage those in my business? Because at the end of the day, when we think about those premium buyers, they're looking for premium solutions and premium solutions comes with something different, something that's unique, something that they haven't heard of before or something that is going to give them a different perspective on how to solve the problem that they're experiencing. So the first thing is really understanding what makes you different. The second thing is understanding who that premium buyer is. And for that, you have to ask yourself, well, where in the journey does a person need to be to actually be ready to buy from me today? Like what has to have happened for this person that they would say, you know what? I'm ready right now. Like, I don't need more time. It doesn't matter how much this costs. I understand that this is what I need in my life, my business, my career, my health, whatever it is, right this very minute. So the more that you understand where your audience, like that ideal person is, the more powerful the, your message is going to be. And the third thing is the outcome that you deliver for these people. So you really have to understand, okay, what is the result? What is the after? What is the, you know, that situ the benefit that's going to come from us working together? So when you bring together those three things, who you are, what makes you different, who your audience is, and what you do for them. And when you really are able to bring those things effectively, that's what's going to allow you to attract those premium buyers in a more powerful way. Hmm. And what do you do for them? So I want to hone in a bit on mm -hmm. that. What do you what are, what are you going to do for them? And you're saying not to go towards you're going to help them solve a problem. You're not doing that. Instead, you're helping them achieve something. OK, so I love that you asked this question. So there's going to be a mix of both, because obviously what I'm not saying is that premium buyers don't have problems. They have to have problems because otherwise your business wouldn't exist. But a good here's a good example, actually. You think about a brand like BMW. BMW isn't, or Mercedes-Benz, or Rolls-Royce, like any of these like more premium car brands, right? They're not using in their marketing things like, you know, you're lying away at night, awake at night, thinking about how crappy your car is mm. and how you're going to get to work the next day. And you're worried about what, like, that's not what they're doing in their marketing. They're doing more vision led, right? They're more aspirational. Here's how you could be. Here's what could happen. Look at this car. Look at the lines. Look at the luxury. So it's a very different type of communication. So what I'm trying to say is that what you want to do, obviously, it's going to depend on the nature of your business is do a good balance between the desire that your audience has and the problem that they have, where your message is really speaking to both, right? You're not just there agitating the pain and making somebody feel terrible. Mm -hmm. And then you're also not just saying like, oh, life is going to be beautiful. We need to kind of ground it down to the problem that they have too. So there has to be a good balance between the problem and the desire. Oh man, yeah, I love that. <laughs> So it's really speaking to both and just not, you know, making it all about the problems. So kind of having that balance there. Actually, I'll give you an example of this, like a more tangible example of if, sure. if this helps. So an example would be, I'm just going to use the example of a business coach because it's it comes easy to me, right? So if you're a business coach, the wrong way of doing this, or not the wrong way, let's say it like the least optimized way, the way in which you're not necessarily going to attract a premium buyer would be using stuff like you're laying awake at night, worrying about where your next client is coming, is going to come in from. And you're super frustrated because every you've tried so many things and nothing seems to work. And you're putting out content, you're doing things, but you know, you understand why nobody understands why you do. And, you know, nothing seems to work and you're pissed off at this point and you don't know what you're going to do next. So that's would be the example of what you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. What you do want to do is say something like, 
you're here to do big things. You are excited to make a big impact and you're going to keep on trying because you know that this is what's in there for you. Yet you don't understand why um, you're not getting the results that you expected to be getting. Um, and, and you're moving forward every single day and you know every day you're going to get, you're getting closer, but you're not quite there yet. And you're trying to figure out those little things that are necessary for you to make a big change in your business. So can you see the difference between the first one, which it was very much pain agitation? Yeah. The second one, which is a little bit more desire driven. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, that was a great example. It really, it came out, the, the difference came out, it, the messaging, the tone, it came out in a, in a very different way. Exactly. Yeah. And it creates for the buyer or the prospect, it creates a certain feeling. And, and is that more attractive for the prospect, or is it going to attract the right ones? I guess that's what you what you were saying, right? That type of messaging is going to attract a certain type of customer. Exactly, buyer. exactly. So can you attract people with the first type of message? Of course you can. Obviously you can. It works. It's worked for millions of years or thousands of years, however long. But what I've found to be true is that the second type of message, which still talks to the problem, but is more focus on speaking to the champion, to the winner, is much more powerful and um, effective in attracting the right type of people. So you're going to get people on the phone, obviously, depending on what type of product or service you're selling, but you're going to talk to people who are much more inclined to make an investment and to move forward, much more serious buyers than the type of people who are in the first group who are very much in pain. Like what I tell my clients often is like, if you're talking to these types of people and you're going on and on about the pain, is it really a surprise to you that you hop on a sales call and somebody tells you that they can't afford it? Well, your content literally speaks to the people that won't be able to afford it. Whereas if we speak to the people who are vision driven, that price objection starts to get reduced because now they're thinking about, well, I'm here to do big things. Yes, this is going to cost me money, but I know that the end result is going to be worth it for me. So it just changes the type of people that you end up attracting and you start bringing in people who are much more um, action takers and resourceful and that premium buyer that I was talking about in the beginning. Hmm. So I can imagine somebody listening to this or watching this and saying, this is good. I appreciate the, the, the insights. Uh, you know, one of the things you mentioned, Fabi, was, you know, to you know, is one of the three elements is what's unique about that business, mm -hmm. right? To, to put that in the messaging. And I can, I can hear a listener or a viewer saying, but there's nothing unique about what we do because there's so many others that are doing the same thing. How do you bring out the uniqueness in a business? I love that. Okay. So essentially every single business is going to be different and it you can be selling a product that is the exact same product that you bought from AliExpress <laughs> and you're selling the same thing mm. um, or you can be selling a service and the angle can always be different. The positioning or the point of view can always be different. But let's go to thinking around how you, as an expert, if that's what you are, can differentiate yourself. I have a framework called the six S's of singularity, and we focus on your story, your successes, your skills, your style, your superpower, and your steps. So essentially what we're doing is we're looking at all of these different elements that make you who you are. At the end of the day, your, you know, just to kind of give you a quick um, example again, I am some, I'm a brand strategist. My focus is on messaging. There's a million people probably in the world that do messaging. But the difference is that I had a very unique childhood. I grew up all over the world. I'm originally from Venezuela, but I lived in Spain, in Brazil, in the US, in India. I've lived all over the world and I've experienced things in a very unique way. And there's nobody else in the world that has that exact experience. There, I can guarantee without yeah. any doubt, there's no other brand strategist that has had the life story that I have had. So therefore, I can look at things in a unique way that only I can bring in my personality, my style, my way of looking at things, my frameworks, my processes, they're all very unique to me. So you want to think about, okay, I have this product or I have this service. If you're selling a service, it's a little bit easier to say, well, you know, what makes me different is this 
story, this anecdotes, this um, experience that I've had, these credentials, these results. If you're selling a product, you want to think about, well, what is the angle? What is the feature that I'm going to say is my feature, the thing that we focus on? You think about like a brand like Volvo, which their whole thing is security or safety in the car, right? And that's their angle. That's their thing. But probably most of the cars experience, like I would imagine, and most of the cars in the world have safety or the same sort of or similar uh, things that um, Volvo has in their cars, right? But this is their angle. So you want to think about what is your angle? What is the thing that makes your brand different than anybody else out there? And how do I leverage that in my own marketing through my positioning? Mm -hmm. Wow. I really liked this, the six S's that you shared. Mm -hmm. Quickly go over them. Again. Sorry, yes, I want them to. Yes, I just them rushed them. them. Okay. And yes. uh, I want everyone to really catch them. Okay, sorry, sorry. The first one is your story, right? Or your stories in general, because mm. we have a lot of stories that make us who we are. The second one is your successes, which are your success stories, testimonials. Um, case studies, examples, or your own personal success story as well. The third one are your skills, which are, again, obviously your different skills that you bring to the table. Hmm. If you have a product instead of skills, it would be you looking at the different factors that make your product different or unique, like we talked about safety or, you know, style or whatever that is. The next one is your superpower, and that has to do actually with your brand archetype, with the personality of your brand and how you come across. The next one, I said style, but I actually meant stand, which is what you stand for, what you believe in as a brand and what you stand against, right? Mm -hmm. So um, what are what, what's your position? What is your point of view that makes you different? And then the last one are your steps, which would be your own frameworks your own processes or methodologies that only you bring to the table. So those are the six things that I feel you want to bring together to really make sure that your scene is different too. Yeah, that's great. Now, mm -hmm. how do you use specificity in mm -hmm. your content to attract better qualified leads? Yes. So essentially, we know now that we're looking to sound different than anybody else. We're looking to speak to the premium client. What I know to be true is that a premium client is going to pay attention to the things that are very specific to the problems that they have. So we want to go narrow in our message and in our content. And I know that people have this fear of like, if I'm, do, if I'm doing something that's too narrow, I'm going to close up my audience. And the truth is that the opposite happens. So um, I'll, one example that I like to give around this is that I'm at a point in my business where we've now hit $100,000 per month twice in the last six months, right? So if I'm online, I'm on TikTok. I love TikTok. So I usually take use TikTok as an example. And I'm scrolling through TikTok and I land on a video that says, "Grow your." here's how you grow your business. I might pay attention to it. I might not because it's too broad. What does grow your business mean? Does it mean I'm going to learn how to make $1? Does it mean that I'm going to grow to $10 million? What, do, what does grow your business mean? But if I scroll through a video or through TikTok and I find a video that says how to go from $100,000 per month to $200,000 per month, now I'm going to pay attention because that's speaking to the specific problem that I have. So we want to create specificity in content in order to attract the type of people that we want to attract, right? And to speak to the things and the experiences and the problems that they have as much as we possibly can through our content. That means both the free content that you're creating, your funnels, your emails, everything. I would rather have people unsubscribe, unfollow, um, block me even if they don't want to listen to me, because why would I want to give my time, my attention, my energy, my money to speaking to somebody that has never or is never going to have an intention of buying because they're not the right fit. So you want to create content that is very specific so that you call in the right people instead. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you pre-sell your offers before you've even pitched them? So the way that you do this is through something that I call your breakthrough message. Um, other people call it the domino belief or the big idea. Essentially, what we want to do is you want to figure out what is the big hypothesis? What is that big 
premise that you are selling. So for example, for me, my premise is messaging. And what I tell people is that they don't have a marketing problem. They have a messaging problem. And everything that I do in my videos, in my emails, in my webinars, in my any content that I create is focus on selling the idea that you don't have a marketing problem, you have a messaging problem. And when you elevate your message, you elevate the quality of clients that you attract. So everything that I'm creating is selling you this idea, right? Um, and that's what you want to do. You want to think about, well, what is my big idea? What is that breakthrough message? What is that What is that thing, that premise, that hypothesis that I really need my clients to or my audience to believe? And when you know what that is, you want to include that in your content in order to get people to say by the end of it, say, oh, wow, I do have a messaging problem or I do need to do this or I do need to do that. And that's going to allow them to say, "Okay, I need to find out more because this is a unique solution or this is something that I hadn't heard of or seen before. Mm. And when you say content, a lot of people, you know, people may not even be, you know, really generating content per se. Uh, They've got a website. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, that's like their main marketing asset, right? And so would you say that it needs to be there? Uh, Yes, absolutely. It does. And I would argue that I understand that a lot of people aren't creating necessarily content, but they need to. I think that in the world that we live in today, we need to focus on delivering value first because the world has shifted, right? Mm. Before there wasn't as much competition in in any area, basically. Um, There wasn't as much access to information. Now there's too much access to too much information. So we need to show our audience that we are the person that can solve the problem that they have, right? And we do that through content. That doesn't mean that you have to be posting every day on LinkedIn or on on Instagram or TikTok. That doesn't mean that, but you do need to have a strategy that would allow you to capture leads while showing the value that you deliver in a very clear way. Yeah, let's have a quick brainstorm. You know, let's just point out, say, three three industries where we, you know, the person would, you know, in that industry would say, you know what, I don't even, I don't think this applies. Like, uh, what content would I create? Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's say a dentist, somebody who oh, owns hundred percent. Yes. What, what content are they creating? Just kind of give us some quick sound bites. Well, of- I would, I would probably be doing a lot of before and afters of showing teeth, depending on, I guess, the type of dentist that they are, right? Um, but making it clear to them, like uh, like a very simple, here's a simple, what I would focus on or how I would positioning it, position it in, 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 in the context of what we've talked about today, right? Instead of only creating content around like cavities, for example, I would talk about how your smile is the fastest way to build trust and um, to really connect with other people. So if you're here looking to, let's say that you want to speak to somebody who wants to become the CEO of a company or to be promoted to the next level, the easiest way for you to do that is to have a smile that captures your mm. um, bosses, I don't know, or or clients, right? That really allows you to build trust and connection. So I would create content around that, for example. <laughs> mm, right. No. Yeah, makes sense. Now, restaurant owner. Okay, so with a restaurant you also want to think about the concept behind everything. With a, with a restaurant, I would do a lot of process. Like I would show how you came up with the food, like with a menu or a specific menu item. I would show you actually cooking it. I would tell the story of why you created the restaurant. I would just build a lot of that type of connection. Same sort of thing then like, what's the concept of the restaurant beyond like it's Mexican food or this or that? Is it a place to go to have like a quick lunch before work? Um, And if that's the case, then the content would be around like how you're here fueling your brain so that you can create better ideas in your workday. But if your concept of the restaurant is around like going at night for dinner, well, then it would be like creativity or hanging out with your spouse or, you know, it was just really thinking about what's the angle, basically. Mm, And so it doesn't necessarily have to be the the thing itself, but it's the ancillary stuff around it. Exactly. Food going out to dinner, what it can do, building relationships, and maybe there's additional stuff surrounding that. Exactly, exactly. Wow, that's great. Good, I'm looking at the clock. This has been amazing. You've shared so many, so many good insights with us, Bobby. Mm -hmm. Um, 
what's the best way for someone to reach out to you? Let's do that. And then I'm going to ask you for a last bit of wisdom. (laughs) Something that we didn't cover. Absolutely. Okay. So the best way to find me is to go to readytoinvestclients.com, readytoinvestclients.com. There you're going to find a training where I go deeper into the things that we've talked about today. So today we've talked about some of these things, but we literally barely scratched the surface. I go super, super deep into explaining how to speak to the ready to invest buyer, how to make sure that, um, like how to build more specificity in your content, how to create that breakthrough message I mentioned. So go to readytoinvestclients.com and then you can find me everywhere and anywhere as Fabi Paolini, F-A-B-I-P-A-O-L-I-N-I. FabiPaolini.com is my website. Um, Fabi Paolini on TikTok, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Pinterest, wherever you want to look for me. That's where you can find me. Great. Good. Awesome. Last bit of wisdom. You've shared a tremendous amount, but I'm going to push you with that last question. <laughs> Go for it. Last bit of it. Last bit of wisdom you want to share with us. Oh, in general, I thought you were going to ask me. Yeah, something. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Something we didn't cover or something you just want to re re Sure. Okay. Advice. So what I would say is, I guess, a reminder. A reminder that at the end of the day, money is an exchange of value. And the more value you put into the world, the more value you get back. This is why creating great content and learning how to really effectively articulate your message is going to be such a differentiator in you attracting better quality leads and you making more money in your business. So really remember that within everything that you do. How do I make sure I communicate more value and how do I make sure that I deliver more value to my clients so that then I can get more value back as well? So I hope that makes sense. Yeah, totally. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Fabi. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Salim. It was great being here. Awesome.